Hello, YouTubers, friends, compatriots, bootlickers, shills, dance, holy service, peasants, vassals, minions, peasants. I'm a useful idiot. Welcome. And uh, today I want to talk about Mexico. And uh, previously I did videos about who's better at beheading ISIS or Saudi Arabia because we have a uh, Saudi Arabia beheading uh, uh, someone almost every day of the month for uh, I believe it was uh, August or September and uh, has quite a history of public executions and beheadings and uh, just wanted to bring up that question because uh, we've now seen these ISIS beheadings now become the catalyst for uh, major shifts in U.S. foreign policy at least uh, a, a change of direction uh, somewhat and uh, so we have these beheadings being used politically even though of course the same elements that the United States supported in the in Syria against the government of Assad uh, the, the same elements that the US supported were involved in all sorts of atrocities including beheadings for the last several years but now the the idea of beheadings is taken on a whole new significance uh, but uh, it's interesting to uh, also take a look at the country of Mexico also noted for beheadings and of course there hasn't been any uh, US uh, foreign policy uh, changes in its attitudes towards Mexico even though these beheadings have been going on there and uh, in fact let's look at some of the figures according to the Mexico Attorney General as of October 2012 1,303 beheadings as a result of drug car drug cartel violence in the past five years so between 2007 and 2012 there was 1,303 beheadings in Mexico so uh, I, I'm not sure if that puts them uh, well over uh, ISIS but it certainly puts them in the same neighborhood as Saudi Arabia but uh, of course this this isn't uh, this isn't the government uh, uh, like it is in Saudi Arabia it is exactly more like terrorists and more like ISIS in the fact that we have drug cartels uh, using this kind of violence and uh, we've seen it escalate over the years too in 2007 there was only 32 beheadings uh, in that year but by 20, 2011 there was uh, nearly 500 and in fact uh, previous to 2006 it was actually rare um, to see beheadings but uh, the scare tactics and the inspiration of uh, terrorist groups in the Middle East uh, made it a, a natural evolution for Mexican drug cartels already known for a lot of their brutality. It's uh, interesting to see their tactic change from uh, previously having secret mass graves uh, to cover up, cover up their crimes to a mentality now where they want massive public dumpings of bodies. They want it to be very public. They want to send a very loud message. Uh, in Mexico there's an average of 23 massacres a month. And of course, that's very re relevant right now, as we have this whole uh, incident with the uh, 43 uh, students missing. And as the government uh, searches uh, for the students who are reportedly executed and burned, uh, they keep finding other graves, other mass graves. Uh, so this is a pretty epidemic. And uh, in in, uh, in May 2012 alone, in one incident in Nuevo León, this is very uh, publicized at the time 49 headless and dismembered bodies were found um, in Guadalajara uh, 18 uh, dismembered uh, headless bodies are found in Nuevo Laredo uh, 14 headless bodies are found and, and in fact their heads were put in ice chests and spread around the city and uh, just like ISIS and just like the uh, terrorists uh, the drug cartels even recorded distributed videos of these be beheadings online and um, it's kind of, kind of interesting that there's actually an argument about where the inspiration for uh, these beheadings came from. Uh, some claim it came uh, comes from uh, the influence of traditional uh, Mayan and Aztec culture in Mexico, uh, all the way to just being inspired by the uh, terrorists. I would I would be uh, more likely and more inclined to agree that uh, they're more inspired by uh, terrorism. But uh, this, uh, this whole uh, issue with Mexico next door and these beheadings and these atrocities and this violence uh, shows that where uh, the United States empire and foreign policy is more concerned 
uh, with these kind of elements overseas than it is with countries uh, right on its border. And uh, uh, rather interesting that the United States would be so less interested uh, in getting involved uh, with our southern neighbor than countries thousands of miles away in the Middle East. Because cer certainly we get oil from Mexico, um, and we have another uh, number of elements that uh, uh, are not only uh, make it complicated to deal in Mexico, but are also akin to problems we have in our own country and we encounter in countries all over the world, and that's corruption in the, in the police, corruption in the government. But uh, the United States, uh, in some respects, could even be claimed to be at war with uh, Mexican drug cartels in, in the United States Southwest because the cartels have uh, made inroads and have quite a presence in the United States itself. And, and that's one of the very alarming parts of this whole issue. The United States policy isn't more uh, uh, aggressive uh, in our own southern regions of our own country than they are in, in places in the Middle East, particularly when we see this same kind of violence, uh, these same kind of atrocities on, on a massive scale. Um, and we'll probably find out there's a lot more uh, in, in the future when more of these secrets are uh, revealed. But uh, you, we have uh, also the familiar U.S. policy failure uh, with the United States playing both sides, uh, playing uh, the United States against the uh, drug war and corruption and against corruption and police and corruption government, yet working with those same corrupt elements in Mexico, as well as uh, working with the cartels themselves. Uh, lots of uh, credible claims that the United States has uh, supported one cartel and pitted it against another and gave it uh, unfair advantages. And certainly everyone's familiar with uh, the fast and furious uh, U.S. government actually uh, arming one drug cartel. And uh, a, a billion dollars a year uh, from the U.S. goes to the Mexican police. And I'm sure a lot of that money uh, is what has made the uh, Mexican police so corrupt. A lot of that money, I'm sure, never even makes it uh, past uh, department members. But uh, so there we have it. Uh, who's better at beheading? Uh, is it ISIS, Saudi Arabia, or the Mexican drug cartels? And considering uh, the, the numbers we have from Mexico, uh, 1,300 in the last five years, uh, considering most of the beheaded bodies we may not even know about, um, I would say maybe the Mexican drug cartels are the best at beheading. I'm a useful idiot. Don't you be one too?